Okay, this is uh, chapter 10. This is section 10-2. This is recording number one. All right, so I, I hate to do this. I don't want to insult you, but I think it's very important that you under, be able to understand what he's saying here. He's kind of walking you through the, the process. So let's see if we can make sure that we all understand what's happening. So what he's saying there is that there's a there's a process. So we got some, we have two variables that we think, boy, there's got to be some relationship between these. Let's see if we can find a good example. Okay, so the example he has been using is this car rental company. Is there a correlation between the number of cars and the amount of income? Now, that's just a metaphor, right? It could be, you know, a correlation between what what levels of uh, of a virus they call it viral loading viral as in a virus a viral lo loading is how much of a virus do you have so maybe there's a correlation between viral loading and your temperature so this correlation is the more you more virus you have the higher your temperature is so that would be an example similar to this more cars more profit more virus more temperature Okay, so it's probably a, a, as good an example as any. We'll use that one. All right, so <clears throat> what he's saying up here is there's a uh, there's a process here. You've got the two variables, viruses and temperature, cars and revenue. So you, you gather the data, you construct a scatter plot. The purpose of the scatter plot is just to kind of give you a visualization. What's the relationship between the variables? Okay, and here's the possibilities. After you draw the scatter plot, after you visualize the data, and you decide, you know what, there does look like there is some sort of a relationship here. The next step is to uh, calculate the value of the correlation coefficient. Get get a number, okay, and then you say, well, I'm going to test the significance of that relationship. Is it significant or is it not significant? If the value of the correlation coefficient is significant, then what you do, then and only then what you do is you determine the equation of the regression line. So this is a new concept. This is a regression line. So this is different. This isn't the, this isn't, uh, this is this is different from the correlation. This is a actual line that you're going to draw through the data. So we'll we'll see examples here in just a second. But you remember we had the the situation where we had those various uh, data points, and it kind of looked like a line, but there was a wasn't one hundred percent a straight line. It was just a, 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 had a bandwidth, had a certain amount of of uh, of a width to it. Yeah, I bounced back here to section ten dash one. Okay, so here's an example I was talking about. So you look at that and you say, okay, yeah, there's a there's a relationship there. Then you calculate the you calculate the R, and when you calculate the R, it's so hard to find these things sometimes. Okay, so you get an R here, 0 0.90. Okay, it's there is still this width here. There's a, a certain uh, it, it's not a straight line. There's a certain amount of a width here in this data. However, you then will do the correlation hypothesis testing business. You'll decide, is the correlation coefficient, is it significant or not? That's what we just talked about a moment ago. Okay. And once you say, yes, it is significant, then you will want to calculate the regression line. Now, the regression line is a line that you draw right through the data or over here, right through this data, or over here, you go go down. You draw this line, okay? That's called the regression line. Okay, I'm back in 10.2. So we draw this regression line. The, the, the regression line is the line of best fit of the data. That's the language we use. We say it's the line of best fit, okay? All right, so he's got a little warning here. Determining the regression line when R is not significant, and then making predictions using the regression line is meaningless. That's what people do on talk radio shows, okay? The, you have to do this in a certain order. You have to make the decision that R is significant. It is a significant correlation coefficient, okay? And once you decide that there is a significant correlation coefficient, then you do the regression line, okay? The purpose of this regression line 
is to allow you to see the trend. And then here's the important part, make predictions, okay? Because you're never going to have all the data that you need. So you want to be able to make predictions, whether it's weather or, you know, what kind of, how many people are going to get infected by the coronavirus, whatever it happens to be, that's what you're going to use this line of best fit for. Okay, so here, here's a plot. You see the scatter plot here? Okay, so there's a scatter plot. You look at that and you say, huh, boy, it looks to me like there's a, a correlation. Okay, let's suppose you decided you did the analysis and you said, okay, fine, there is a significant uh, correlation coefficient there. All right, so again, in the process, you decide there is a significant correlation of coefficient, uh, coefficient of correlation. All right, so now you've got this data here. And now what you want to do is you want to have the line of best fit. You want to have this regression line. If, if, you, if you just took a piece of paper like this, and if you uh, said to yourself, okay, I'm going to get my ruler out. I'm going to draw a line through there. How would you do it? I mean, you, maybe you draw this line. Maybe you draw this line. You would have no way of scientifically deciding what's the best line. And you wouldn't even be able to give me a definition of what the best line is. But now... In this section, this little subsection, we're going to talk about this. What is the line of best fit? What, how do we decide that? What do we, what do we do? Okay, how do we make that de that definition? How do we decide what the best line to draw there is? Okay, the first thing we need is we need some more language here. The difference between the actual value y. So pick here's a here's a data point right here. Let's say it has a y value, then but there's a line there, right? What's the difference between the actual data point and the line? What, what's the difference between the, the Y value of the data point that you measured and the Y value of the line that you're predicting? What do we call that difference? It's called a residual. The difference between the actual value of Y and the predicted value of, oh, I'm sorry, the predicted value Y prime, okay? For a specified value of x, so let's take a look here. All right, so we've got we've got an observed value. This is the actual data point. This is the line that you're drawing. Okay, so for this particular x value, you come up here. That right there is the predicted value for the y. This is the observed value for the y. This this is a delta here. It's a difference. So this d sub one. That this d sub one is what he's calling what he's calling the residual, or also known as a predicted error. So every data point here's here's a data point here's a data point here's a data point here's a data point here's a data point. Every data point will have the you have the ability to calculate what the residual is. Okay, so when you have these residuals. What are you trying to do? You're trying to minimize those. You're trying to reduce these residuals so that the total error, the total amount of, of mis not mistakes, but the total error is at a minimum, as, as small of an error as you can get. That's the concept behind this. We are trying to reduce the uh, error as much as possible. Okay. So this method of, of making the residuals as small as we possibly can, we call that the method of least squares. And we, we will see in just a minute where that name comes from, okay? But the, uh, we call this the method of least squares, and as a result of using this method, this regression line, you'll also see it referred to as the least squares regression line. In other words, the least, as in the smallest uh, regression line of these squares. Okay, so where does the squares come from? All right, let's take a look here. So I just discussed this. We got these deltas here. We got these residual errors here, okay? Now, here's the problem, okay? If you... It doesn't do you any good to just make those guys small because they'll add up to be zero all the time. What you have to do is you have to make the squares, you, you square these errors, and that takes away the negative guys. Because like right here, this might be, this would be a positive number. This guy take away this guy is positive, but this guy take away this guy is negative. 
Okay, so if you if you're finding these errors, sometimes they're positive, sometimes they're negative. So just like before, when we calculated other things, we would square things just to get rid of the negative sign. That's what we're going to do here. And that's where we call it the method of least squares. So in this next section here, we're going to actually figure out how do we determine what the uh, regression line is. What's the actual equation? Can we come up with an actual equation? And the answer is yes, but the formula is a real nightmare. The concept isn't as hard as it looks, but the formula is a, is a nightmare. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm almost out of time. I've got three minutes left approximately on this video. So let me stop this video. And then on the next video, we're going to talk about the determination of the regression line.